So my name is Chris Morris. I'm an archivist at the Computer History Museum. Uh, today is October 18th, 2023. We're doing an interview today with Jean Williams for the VMware Founders Collection. This interview will become part of the permanent collection at the Computer History Museum. Uh, Jean, thank you so much for joining us today for this interview. My pleasure. Um, so just for the record, could you tell us your um, current title and uh, location? I'm a senior marketing manager for the VMUG program at VMware, and I currently live in Elk Grove, California, which is up by Sacramento. But I'm a native of California, born and raised San Francisco Bay Area. Um, tell us a little bit about your education and career path leading up to joining VMware. Sure. So I went to school locally. Um, my goal at the time was to become a nurse. Mm -hmm. So I've had a passion to be a nurse since I was like 10. And um, while I was in school, I had to work and um, to pay the bills. And um, I had a lot of jobs uh, working in advertising, working in the security business, I worked at a medical systems company in Palo Alto. And there I met this young guy who I kind of butted head with, heads with, but he seemed to really like me and, you know, I think saw a lot more in me than I saw in myself. And he was off to leave to go work for a um, mainframe company in, in Mountain View and really wanted to take me with him. So I went ahead and decided to interview for that position. And I started over there um, at a, as an EA and um, worked there probably for five years. I moved into contracts administration role. I worked into the field engineering role and then became um, a field marketing manager there. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a fun job to have, but then, you know, I had gotten married and we wanted to start a family. And it was a decision of my husband and myself to stay home and raise kids. So that's what I thought my career was going to be. Um, I was home for um, five years while my kids started kindergarten and preschool. And then I just kind of got bored. I didn't want to be a housewife. I didn't want to just clean house. I, I felt like I had a lot more to give. Um, and even during the time when I was home with the kids, I did a lot of volunteer work. Um, I worked at our church. Um, and one day our pastor asked me um, how things were going. I said, well, I decided to go back to work. And he said, great, can you start tomorrow? And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> um, and he, he wanted me to come and help um, work with him as his admin had broken her foot and was off for a couple months. And so it was kind of great to just be back in an office and kind of feel professional and working and making some money. Um, but while I was there, I was, you know, applying for different jobs and it was hard. It was hard to get back into work after five years. Technology's changed and um, I didn't really keep in contact with all the people that I had built networks with. Um, so I finally just started making phone calls and just said, what the heck, I'll just call people. And this guy who I worked with at this last company, he was just a marketing colleague that sat next to me. And I asked if he remembered me and he said, oh my gosh, yes, I guess he really admired me. You know, sometimes you just don't pay attention to how people react, but he really admired my work and he was really thought it was great that I decided to stay home and, and raise a family, but understood I wanted to get back to work and he wanted to do anything he could to help me. Um, at that point in time, he was a CEO of this new company that was just starting and he, you know, helped me find a job there. Mm -hmm. And so it was a, an exciting way to start. I worked at that company for 12 years. Mm. and um, kind of moved up from helping them um, build a call center is when telemarketing first started and people, you know, they were so happy to hear us calling them, talking about our company, because these were customers I was calling. Mm -hmm. And um, then I got to help develop a fulfillment center. And then I moved more into a marketing role where I became a field marketing manager. And I really fell in love with working with our customers and our partners and our sales teams and inviting, you know, customers to these sales events. And, you know, my passion really took off there with kind of this community, you know, stuff that I'm doing now. But after 12 years, the company did a big reorg and they just laid off our whole team. Mm. That was digit so, design? That was the digit design. 
Yeah. Did you do some research on me? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it was it was a really fun company to work for. Um, a lot of people were in the music industry. So we mm-hmm. used to have big parties all the time. Everybody had their own bands and they come and play. And it, and it was it was kind of sad to ch- close that chapter. But I always feel like, you know, another door opens when that happens. Mm-hmm. And when I was there, the contracting agency I used to bring on my contractors all the time called me one day and asked me to do them a favor. You do me a favor, I work for this company called VMware. Uh, it's just a two week assignment doing field marketing work. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know anything about that industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to think about it because I had been working at home for a while. Um, I went ahead and took that job and that was back in 2005. And within a week, they offered me a permanent job, and I've been there ever since. So two weeks turned into eighteen and a half years, years. yeah, <laughs> or more. <laughs> yeah. So, so what what was VMware like when you started? What was your first it was a impression? Very small company. We had probably less than nine hundred people there. Mm-hmm. Um, we were still at a point when the president of the company interviewed everybody. So I had the pleasure of, you know, meeting Diane Green and interviewing with her and 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 talking, um, you know, with all the people from the, the really early days, which was great. My manager at the time um, was just a great guy and we had a small team and... There was just so much to do at a small company. You got to wear many hats. So I, I worked on seminar series. I worked on the marketing database. I worked on campaigns. And then one day, my boss said, we would like to get a user group started. I'm like, he says, can you call these customers and see if they would like to be like a chapter leader? Huh. I said, yeah, I guess. So I called them and, you know, like it's kind of out of the blue. And I don't know if they were interested at the time. I thought, I'm not sure this is what I want to do. Just call people and ask them to get groups started. So I continued just kind of working on the program. And every time I called people, they were so excited, just like my last company, so excited to hear from VMware. Oh my gosh, VMware is calling me. So I started doing a lot of research at some large companies on what their user group programs look like. And I, I really felt... Um, Like I kind of took the best from all these different companies and what I felt would make a a great user group program. And there we began. Um, You know, I I worked as a user group manager probably for five years before we grew so fast that we could not uh, no longer do it internally. Mm -hmm. And so we had to look for outside resources. So my manager at the time, Teresa Strait, she had known um, a consultant um, that you know, worked with association management companies and they gave us some suggestions on, you know, this company to talk to and we did and they offered everything we needed. We needed someone to manage a database, membership, events, have staff that can go out and help support the events. And so we went ahead and um, brought this idea back to our VP. We had to do a big selling pitch to him to make sure that he was okay with us doing that. And that we can make sure that they were self-sustaining, that they had revenue coming in that they can generate and they can run independently. And so we were able to do that. Um, As we were growing, these user groups were growing really fast, as I mentioned. We had so many partners that wanted to participate. But for every chapter meeting, we only really wanted one partner to kind of sponsor and present at a meeting. Having five and ten people who wanted to was just too much. So after, um, I think they had done about, I don't know, I worked with one group and what they, they came up with this idea of doing a conference where Mm -hmm. we can have like an exhibit hall and we can Mm -hmm. have multiple partners participate and, and present. And so I started working with local chapters on those groups who had enough people who wanted to come to these types of events and partners who wanted to participate. And I was just like running this show here. We had like 16 conferences going up are going on at one time and um, lots of partner participation lots of money coming in and it just got to a point where it wasn't going to be manageable internally anymore and that's you know how i was able to kind of sell this is that all these partners want to participate and this helped drove the revenue for vmunk to get started 
Um, going back just a step, what what did VMware see as the the benefit of fostering a user group program? Well, I had a lot of different business. Well, we had one main business unit at the time. You know, we, we were just selling vSphere at the time or ESXi, and they really wanted to bring customers together for feedback, give them op an opportunity to network with each other. And um, I have to say, you know, a lot of the customers, you know, were SMB and commercial customers. They did not buy directly from VMware. They bought through partners. So they never had this opportunity to directly talk with VMware. So the excitement of VMware coming out and presenting to them and talking one-on-one -on -one to them was so exciting for them. And I think we learned a lot, which we brought that information back, goes back to engineering, helps me help, can help make decisions. Um, but it also, you know, built this trust, you know, with our customers. Um, they looked to us as a trusted advisor, and that was a big goal for us to, to make sure that, you know, we built this loyalty around our customers and that we were here for them. We're here to help pro um, solve their problems and come up with solutions that work best for them. Um, so how did the one, one thing that occurs to me is that when you're pitching this, um, you know, that the, that the group should go independent and sort of spin off and run, be run separately. Then there's a question of how do you maintain some level of c control or input into the quality of the experience, the messaging, that kind of stuff that VMware wants to get across to its users. You know, I think we're in a unique position because there's a lot of company, big companies that have user groups that go independent and the, the company really just kind of lets them do their thing. And we really wanted to be engaged. We wanted to, to be working with them. So one of the benefits I think they had is the relationship with VMware for us to be able to bring, you know, speakers out to their events and have them talk one-on-one -on -one with customers while they're there. It's always been, um, it, it, it really, it wasn't like a sales pitch we had to make to the independent organization. They wanted our support. They mm -hmm. felt the benefit of having VMware involved. You know, this is what the customers and the community wanted. So it, that wasn't a hard sell there. Um, you know, obviously over time we've gone through periods when the economy has changed and maybe travel has been limited. Um, and so people, even though they want us to come out there, we can't go because of travel restrictions. But I've built a, a pretty uh, decent database of local resources that we try and leverage lo local resources as much as we can. So um, at this point in time, as mature as a group has gotten, we actually have a VMware SE or technical account manager that's assigned to every chapter that's local that will support them in either coming out and presenting or find the right resource that can support the request of the, the local chapter. So we have a lot of support um, from executive level all the way down to the technical level supporting, you know, the VMUG program at this point. Mm -hmm. What was the culture of VMware like when you started the internal culture? Um, it was fun. Um, everybody, it was just like a small family. You know, everybody was there to support each other. We were all learning a lot at the time. We, it was fun to just pilot lots of new programs. And so I think having the freedom to just trial by error, you know, l try things out, see how they work, change it, um, was really a great, a great thing at the time. I think um, we all felt supported and we're given the resources that we need. You know, when you're working for a small company, there's a lot, of, lot less red tape. You just, I had, a, I felt like I was an action person. I could just go and get things done, mm -hmm. which was really great in the early days. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about how VMUG has matured. What's changed over the years uh, in terms of the relationship or the, the I, not the relationship, I want to say what's changed over the years in terms of the offerings, the, the um, sort of breadth of the program? Well, when we first started, we were really just supporting a lot of local chapters. And then, as I mentioned, we started building these conferences. Well, those 16 conferences 
um, which actually wasn't as many groups. Some groups had conferences every quarter. So one group might have had four and then one might have done them once a year. So those have gone, we've gone up to at one point in time, I think close to 36 conferences a year. Wow. Um, you know, these are all around the world. Um, mm -hmm. So supporting those. Um, still, the chapter meetings are like over five to 600 meetings a year. Um, we don't physically go out and we don't coordinate those. That's up to the local chapters to do that. The conferences I'm very much still involved with. Mm -hmm. um, what's expanded during COVID is a lot of virtual events. We still do virtual events. They're very popular. Some people still don't want to get out of the house and go in person. But also, it's just the comfort of being in your, your own house or in your office. You know, some of the shops, our companies we work for have small IT shops. And so they might be the only person and they can sit for a couple hours on a Zoom call, but they're not going to be able to come in person for the whole day. Mm -hmm. So virtual events have been a huge um, benefit for the, the BIMA community. Um, they have a whole webcast program. So we do a lot of webcasts. Um, we do a lot of road shows now, which we didn't do before. So a lot of the different business units will have specific topics and agendas and they will go on a road show and be mug help support them. I do see a lot of business groups coming to us and maybe they have events team within their own, um, within their own organization, but they still will come to be mug to help execute a lot of things. Mm -hmm. They're a well oiled machine. They've got the staff, they've got the um, means to, um, set up registration and work with our membership. We have over 160,000 active members around the world. Wow. So quite a, quite a bit of people to reach out to for events. Um, let's see where are some of my other questions that were on my list here. Um, I wonder if you can speak to how the internal culture at VMware kind of shows up in VMUG. It seems like there's a, there's a really tight relationship between VMUG and VMware and that the vibe is very similar <laughs> in the, at least the people I've talked to, like it, it seems like somehow VMUG really does reflect VMware's culture. And I'm wondering how that happens if that's intentional. Um, I don't know that it was intentional. It might have just evolved that way. Believe it or not, we have a lot of, um, you know, VMUG leaders that end up becoming VMware employees. <laughs> I believe it. They yes. also grow out and they work for partners a lot. They, you know, they build up a lot of skills. A lot of our leaders are very, you know, they might come in being very introverted. They're, they're not half, you know, they don't want to do public speaking. So they, they develop a lot of professional skills when they become a leader and also just as a VMUG member. So we, we are always working on professional development with our leaders. Um, so I think kind of people coming from VMUG into VMware and having those VMware people still very engaged with VMUG helps probably bring some of that, that passion, um, you know, that we have, you know, kind of going back and forth. We're also want to be sensitive to the whole, um, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion. We're, we're big on that. We have a V ladies group. We wanted to really bring women in tech up, you know, bring that up. Um, so one of the girls, um, our ladies that worked for a company in Indianapolis, um, I was talking with her and some other people one day and they're like, where are all the women? Mm. We need a women's group. We need to support each other. And she is one of the ones who actually started, you know, the V ladies program. Then she later, um, was working on a program called my home lab. So she started a podcast for VMUG where she talked about building your own home lab and getting the experience using our products. And now she works at VMware. Mm. So, you know, I think, um, yeah, you know, she's very passionate about it. We have a lot of um, women that work at VMware that we try and get involved to be more passionate with the women in tech and kind of build that up within the VMA community. So that's kind of one example. Um, but I think that, you know, we just from the, the way we integrate with VMUG, I think that kind of just brings some of that culture with us and everything that we do. 
we really do care about our customers and we want, you know, my, my thing that I used to always tell the salespeople, you're not there to sell when you come there, you're there to build a relationship. You'll get, you'll probably eventually get sales out of this, but it's because they, you become a trusted advisor to them because they trust you there. You, you, you're getting to know them on a personal level. And it goes so far by doing that. Just, just really be genuine with the customers that you have and really come to them knowing that you want to try and help them with their problems and solutions and connecting them with other customers that maybe went through the same challenge that could help them. So peer-to-peer stuff is very important um, in the community as well. Mm-hmm. Um, is VMUG a forum for... <laughs> hard questions that is do you is that community asking the hard questions of vmware or and if i'm making sense maybe my question doesn't really make sense but i guess sometimes it there is a component of uh this is a forum where customers can ask like why isn't this doing what i need it to do or holding your feet to the fire a little bit does that happen at VMUG? Um, I'm sure it does. You know, VMUG does not hold back. <laughs> you know, they don't hold back. Um, I'm not necessarily in all those kind of conversations. We do provide at some of these user conferences that we do opportunities to have like a private room where we actually have a lunch and learn where sales teams come in and they invite customers um, to have kind of those meetings. And I'm sure they get asked the tough questions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're here to help support them and give them the answers that they need. Mm-hmm. Um, so your entire time at VMware ha- more or less has been working in this arena. Is right. that right? And you said that at the beginning, you kind of did pick and choose, look at other programs that other com- corporations run and kind of try to pick and choose the best of those. How would you say v- VMUG compares with similar programs at other companies today? Well, one of our big goals to start with is to make this a world-class organization. And I feel like we've reached that. I have a lot of companies that still call me to want to know how they can get their user group started. And they kind of try and pick our brains. But I think that we uh, we appreciate our customers. We do we appreciate our leaders and we do a lot for our leaders. We do try and... Um, I mean, we can't get every single leader to something like VMware Explorer, but we give them an opportunity to earn free passes to do that. We have a leader summit generally once a year where we invite over 100, 150 leaders on site to campus. They get to meet, you know, one-on-one with our executives, learn more about what we're doing, what's coming up, kind of roadmap stuff. They have to go under NDA. Um, We usually do some kind of community um, involvement project with them to kind of give back to the community. And then we just kind of learn from each other and how we can best help them grow professionally within their local communities, how we can, you know, ha- show them how to have the best meeting possible locally and draw more members to them. So I think giving back to the leaders, giving back to the community in the, in the ways that we do um, is it makes it a, an important group. People want to be part of it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm really proud to, to see when I was, started it, I think by the time I let go, to go independent, um, we had about 50,000 members. And now, you know, we have 160,000 active members, which is a big difference. A lot of user groups count every single user they ever had in the program. And right. um, we count only active. So we could probably have 300,000 or more you know, members. But right now, we're only counting active members. So that means right. they're engaged in one way or another, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's it's quite an amazing, I think, the longevity of the program, but also just the dynamism of the program that it's so, um, like you said, people want to be part of it. People are really enthusiastic about it. And there's this beautiful relationship between the company and the group that just kind of feeds on itself and keeps being valuable to both sides. Um, yeah. is fantastic. Um, there, there was one thing I did mention to you early yeah. on. When we first started, we we brought in an advisory group of VMUG leaders, getting their inputs and insights all along the you know the transition to independence, mm-hmm. and that became our first board of directors. Myself and my manager at the time, 
um, have been on the board since the beginning. I'm still an active board member. So we do have a, a really great diverse group of customers on the board to, to provide insights and strategy to, to continuously make this, you know, um, a thriving independent organization. I think that's an important piece of it too. Absolutely. Awesome. To have that sort of focus yeah. of what is it that the group can do to really serve its members, to be active, to, to keep that strong relationship with VMware going. Um, who are some of the people that you would point to as having a strong impact on your time at VMware? Um, well, there's been a few people, but I would have to say that one I feel like had the most impact was my last manager, which was Ann Johnson. She retired last year. Um, she was my manager for 10 years and we just had a great working relationship together. You know, my strengths and her strengths, our weaknesses, you know, they balanced out. So we made a great team. So she always had my back. You know, we, she always was open to ideas of trying new things. And one thing that really excited me about VMUG, and some people probably, you know, frown on why you stayed in one job for so long, but every year we're adding new programs, changing things around. It's exciting because being independent, they kind of have the freedom to do that. Internally, you might have to go through like more red tape to try and buy off, you know, ideas, but we're always piloting new things. Every year is something different and exciting. I've had the wonderful privilege of traveling around the world, you know, to a lot of these events, which has been, you know, a great add on to it for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk at all about the, um, the executive leadership and how their, their vision or input filters down to VMUG? I mean, um, specifically the CEOs and the changing yeah, CEOs. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that they provided any input per se, but their involvement has been great. I think back from, um, we had a CTO, Paul Strong, who had a lot of strong vision for another program called the um, CTO Ambassadors. They're very involved um, with VMUG. Paul was very involved. We had Pat Gelsinger was just a rock star for us. He would come mm -hmm. to events and, uh, you know, he just loved the community and they loved him. And then now with Ragu, you know, there and Submit and Sanjay, we've had a lot of really strong executives and they really support the community, which has been great. The, the leaders, the, the VMUG leaders, we have a leader lunch every year at these um, VMware Explorer events that we do of VMworld. And um, those executives all come. You know, Chris Wolf is another one. Joe Bagley, our CTO, our CTO, Amanda Blevins, they would all come and present and talk and just, you know, be real with them. You know, all kind of ending day content. And um, they just loved it. They loved having that one on one with them, taking pictures with them. They made them feel special. And we really appreciated their support. Mm -hmm. um, is there any particular endeavor program within the VMUG? history that you're particularly proud of? I would say I just had the, um, I'm proud of the fact that I was able to accomplish as much as I have um, <laughs> with the program itself. I think just, um, you know, taking the, the VMUG from the, ind from the uh, internal group to the independent group was a huge undertaking. I was very proud of what I did and I, I was really taken back when they, they said we were going to go independent because I was feeling, you know, really strong about it. Um, it was the right decision to make for us to grow because I wasn't getting the resources internally, but I did kind of lose the strong connection I have with the customers and with the partners because I worked with them every day closely. Mm -hmm. And now there's someone in between the independent organization, which is fine. So I just have a different relationship. Um, but I, it also helped me build a very strong relationship with all of our business units and our executives and everybody else on the VMware side who participates in, v, in VMUG. So um, I'm not sure that I remember the question now. It's just the project. That answered, that the, that pro answered the question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely I'm answered the question. I'm just very proud of the whole the transition from where we started to where we are now. Mm 
Um, can you, uh, I usually ask people about lasting impact, but before I get to that, I want to ask in a very pointed way, why is VMUG important to VMware? Well, I think that, um, well, you're going to put me on the spot here. I've never really asked anyone that question, but I, I do know based on all the um, teams that come to us to make sure that we're engaged, that we have a very active community base. And so people want to be involved with that. Mm -hmm. They're active. They give candid feedback. They're our, har our harshest critics. Um, but, you know, they, they give us the feedback we need to, you know, make decisions. So I think that's really important for a company mm -hmm. to have this you know, large base of loyal customers continuously willing to get feedback when asked. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about your time at VMware that we haven't covered? No, um, you know, this isn't, this is not past, this is future. You know, obviously we're going through an acquisition and it's coming to an end, which is a very sad time for me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what our future holds. I guess we'll find out in the next couple of weeks, but VMUG will still be there. And so I hope to still be part of VMUG in some fashion because um, I do like working with the community. So if it's not if it's not at VMware, I guess I'll find another community to join. <laughs> Jean, thank you so much for being part of our project and for sharing your thoughts today. Well, it was my pleasure. Hopefully I answered the questions that you wanted. Absolutely.